Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back, that is, if you are returning. If you are watching me for the first time on YouTube, then a warm Cape Town welcome to you. So in my movie, I have a scene or, uh, where I needed an extra to cycle by with a bicycle. So I'm going to share with you guys, in my opinion, the quickest way to actually animate a kid cycling. I hope you guys learned something from it. Alright, to start, let's take a quick look at the set that I used inside Unreal Engine. So this is my set, it's a really cool stylized small neighborhood by Alexandra Ivanov. And this matches the style of my characters very nicely, so that's why I chose it. I can't remember how much I paid for this particular set, it was a number of months, maybe even a year ago. But I know that it was quite a good value for money, I think it was under $15 if I remember correctly. I then also had a look at Alexandra's other work and he's got a beautiful portfolio of very similar style scenes. Uh, and some of them were absolutely free, so do go over to the Unreal Marketplace and grab them while you can. So with both iClone and Unreal open, I started by transferring the low poly version of the necessary props from Unreal to iClone. And the reason I did this was to give myself some idea of the space that I was dealing with and also to make sure that my friend Jimmy here doesn't bump into anything while he's cycling. So to do this uh, is quite simple, uh, you go into Unreal, you select the prop you want to transfer over, right click on it and then you go down to transfer to iClone and there we go, it carries over automatically. Now this option is unfortunately only available in iClone 8, not iClone 7, sorry iClone 7 users. But there are other ways, more manual ways of doing that and that's obviously to save your FBX or your OBJ and then just bring it up inside iClone. We can now load in our bicycle prop. Now there are many ways to get a bicycle into iClone. Uh, you can transfer it from, well, basically any software from Blender. Um, you can even bring in from, uh, from Unreal Engine. And there's a couple of free bicycle props available online from various 3D trading stores. But the one I'm going to be using is a rigged bicycle prop that's found inside iClone 7. And the reason I'm choosing this is because remember the title of this YouTube video is the easiest way to create a cycle animation. And you'll also notice I said it's available in iClone 7. That was not a mistake. It's actually not available in iClone 8. It came as part of the software package with iClone 7. So to get it over to iClone 8, it's quite easy. You open up iClone 7, you copy and save the file. So you're going to find the file first. You copy and save it onto your drive, on a desktop, on your computer. And then once you've saved it, you can literally drag and drop it into iClone 8 and it will come into your set fully animatable and fully rigged. There we go, now we can position our bike. Alright, that's the right position for me. So I don't like the old flat textures, this is obviously an old prop uh, and I want to give it some PBR textures quickly. And to do this I literally drag the appropriate texture from my PBR 200 pack. And then I'm going to add that in and then I'm going to change the color to blue to suit my character. And that's quite simple to do. You just go to your color picker, which you'll find inside the materials base texture and apply that. Okay, now we can bring in our character Jimmy, because he's the guy that's going to go cycling today. Hmm, yeah, this bike is too small for our character. But before we scale it up, uh, let's just position Jimmy quickly. Cool! Now to link our character to the bike prop. To do this, it's also quite easy. You select the bike in the scene view or the scene window. Right click uh, and then click script and select actor. Now all we're going to do is we're going to right click on our actor Jimmy there. Brilliant! Jimmy is keen to go cycling. Now to set up the body parts to the dummies uh, that come with the bicycle. And we're going to start with the feet. So let's position the feet um, using the relevant dummies, not the feet itself. There we go, left foot is done. Now let's do the right one. Alright, both our feet are connected. Now let's do the same for the two hands. We're going to start by positioning the hands first. And then we're going to use the motion layer tool, which you'll find underneath the animation tab. And we use this tool to actually position each individual finger. Alright, both feet and our hands are connected. Okay, Jimmy, let's ride. With Jimmy selected, let's hit the G key. And the G key is used to get a top view or a bird's eye view of the scene, which is the best way to actually control the bicycle. 
And now let's take Jimmy and the bike for a ride uh, using the driving tool that comes with the bicycle prop. Told you guys, this is the easiest way to create a bicycle animation. So all we're gonna do is literally control the controls to control the bicycle. And it's best to do your recording using the by frame mode. Uh, it slows down the animation and makes it easier for you to control. So if your real time mode is on, uh, you can click on it and then just select by frame. Once my cycle animation was complete, I wanted to do one final check before I send it over to Unreal. So to find your animation, you'll have to go into the bike's animation timeline. And I want to check my animation close up, so I'll throw in a follow cam. To do that, you've got to create a camera, then name it, and then position your camera, and then go to the modify window, scroll down to attach. Once in attach, you can click on parent, and we're going to pick our bike. Let's have a look at that animation close up. Here's a quick look at the animation at normal playback speed. And as you can see, it is really, really slow. But no worries, we'll speed things up in the timeline. So to make the animation more interesting, I thought I'd have Jimmy climb the curb. And I did this by actually working in the timeline and manipulating the transform track. And then I sped things up by dragging the animation clip inwards. Let's have a look at that. And that's much better. You go, Jimbo. So most people would be happy with this, but I wanted to make it a bit more realistic. So what I did was I actually broke up my animation in the timeline. And then I sped up and slowed down certain spots in the animation just to make it more realistic and to stay away from that boring constant speed. Animation's done, now to send it over to Unreal for render. So our friend Jimmy is nearly ready to be sent over to Unreal for render. But before I send him over there, I wanted him to look really good. So I increased his polys by doing a quick subdivision in the scene tab. I opted to go with a subdivision level 2 which looks perfect. There are currently two ways to transfer your characters and your animation from iClone to Unreal. The one is through the auto setup, but I'm going to go with option two, which is the new and improved live link that can be found only in iClone version 8.1. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select only my character and my bike prop, and I'm going to simply hit the transfer button. So this might take a while. I suggest maybe grabbing a cup of coffee while you wait for your animation and your character to transfer. Over in Unreal, I received all the data. And here's our buddy Jimmy and his brand spanking new bike. So I'm going to press play in iClone and we should be able to see our animation play in real time in Unreal. There we go. And this never ceases to amaze me. So it's still rather slow, but don't worry, we'll make Jimmy a stunt driver soon. But first, I need to fix a couple of things, uh, like the seat position. And I also don't like the way that the bike deals with the uneven surface. Let's sort those two things out quickly. And then finally, before I actually record the animation uh, inside Unreal Engine, I want to just tweak the character animation and sell the animation a bit more by working on three of the 12 principles of animation. So the three I'm going to work on is the anticipation, and I'm going to do that before he lifts the bike. And then I'm going to do some overshooting after he lifts the bike. And then I'm going to add some ease ins and ease outs for each of the moves. And this I'll do using the standard transition curves. Finally, we can record our animation into Unreal Engine 5. So while having both software open, navigate to Unreal and open the take recorder. Next, Go to the Take Recorder window and click on the green Sourced drop-down. From the Active drop-down menu, you can then choose Jimmy, which is obviously our character, and then of course Jimmy Bike. 
because these are the only two items that we want to actually record from iCloud. And then before you hit the big red button, make sure that your iClone timeline is set to the start frame. And then more importantly, make sure that you are on by frame mode and not real time mode. And this will avoid a lot of the losing of the animation keys. So when you hit the red record button, you'll see a little window will open up at the bottom right of the Unreal screen. And this is the confirmation that we are busy recording. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the play button on the timeline and Jimmy will start cycling. So for saving us all the time, I'm going to just speed up this particular part and we'll have a look at the animation once the recording is done. Now let's open our recorded sequence, which we'll find inside the text folder by default inside Unreal Engine. Right, open the sequence and let's hit play and watch him go. Hey Jimmy, watch out for those trash cans, man. Jimmy, stop! No! So in case you didn't know, you can actually capture the thumbnail uh, for your take uh, and that you can do by simply right clicking on your take and then going into the Asset Actions tab. And then I see our direction arrow from iClone was actually accompanying the bike. Uh, so to hide that, I'm just going to go to the material properties and then just change the opacity to zero for that arrow. All right, we're nearly there. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a camera in the sequencer and uh, just to add some animation to it as well. And here's my keyframe camera transitions and rotations. All right, the basic render is complete. Here is the raw AVI render from Unreal Engine. All right, so my personal thoughts are it's very dull and it's definitely too slow, but I'll clean all that up in post. So I'm going to be doing my post work in Final Cut Pro and then I'm gonna add some sound effects and some music to it and voila, this is the final result. And there you go, a simple cycle animation that I made a whole lot more complicated by adding 12 principles of animation and perfecting it by putting bumps and jumps and all of those things through there. But yeah, if you've just stuck to the basics, it shouldn't have taken you that long. So if you've learned even just one tip today, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all the other necessary things to show your support to this channel. Until next week, cheers everyone. Mm -hmm.